Now, this is one type of material, which is the traditional conventional materials. Unfortunately, these materials don't give us always what we need in terms of, you know, when there's some extreme loads like earthquakes or blasts or wind. So that's why recently we started looking for new materials, as we call them smart materials, okay? It could be used in construction in a very smart way to give us better performance under extreme loads like earthquakes, as example. So let me just give you one example of smart materials. Of course, when I say smart materials, it's a huge family of materials. It's not one material, it's a bunch of materials. I'm just going to focus on one type, which is, which is shared memory hour. For short, we just call them SMA. Okay? This is kind of like spring made of SMA. And really, uh, what it does, you know, from the name, you can tell. Shared memory alloys, they are very smart materials because they remember their shape. How is that possible? Have you ever seen this before? This material before? Where? Okay. Have you? Who else? I years ago. Where? Two years ago, where? It was here. It was here? Oh, you guys were here before? I was also doing a presentation. Oh, no. Yeah, you Okay. Here's an SMA. All right. This is spring, very similar to what we have, but a little less of a bigger, bigger picture. So, if you deform it like that, you know, that's like any metal, that's no big deal about that. So, what's the problem? Well, let's just try to expose it to some temperature. Right. Okay. Here we go. It came back to the original shape. Don't worry, you will all get to play with this a lot today and, you know, enjoy it, but, you know, after the presentation. But this is the unique thing about this. No other material from the traditional materials that we saw can do this. Okay, how can we benefit from that? Now, structural engineers try to use this in a very smart way. Of course, this is not a cheap material. This is a very, very costly material. So, somebody would kind of say, well, can I build a bridge with SMA? Of course not. Because it's as if you're asking yourself, like, can I build a bridge with gold? No. The answer is no, all right? But what we can do as structural engineers is to know exactly the critical locations in the structure that affects the behavior the most, and we can put these on them. We can put very small amounts of these materials in them to protect the entire structure, as I will show you uh, guys, all right? So I won't go in details, of course, in this atomic structure, because it has some scientific thing behind this coming back and forth, you know? Uh, but let me just show you immediately couple applications for these shared memory alloys. And I'll focus on earthquakes, for example, all right? Like, these are four pictures from four different earthquakes. And you can see the damage happened in four earthquakes uh, for the bridges. This is from the Loma Prieta earthquake back in 1989 in California. This is in Kobe uh, earthquake in Japan in 1995. This is a Northridge earthquake. California, 1994, and this is San Fernando earthquake back in 1971, okay? So you can see that they were all huge earthquakes that caused the collapse of a few bridges back then. You can see the collapse is in the form of what? One of the spans, this is what we call a span, between two columns or two supports that the span falls down. Now let's see why, why this happened. I'll explain, explain to you in my next slide. Now this is a bridge. This is a picture of a bridge, okay? It consists of two frames. They are sitting right next to each other like that. Okay, let's see what happened when an earthquake hits. They will start shaking like this. All right? And then what will, uh, what will happen next? Well, this relative movement will cause this hinge. Sometimes you're driving this, by the way, you feel the hinge just underneath your car. Uh, this hinge will open gradually due to the relative movement of these two frames. This opening could be really, really big. And then what will happen if this opening gets really, really big? Boom. Yes. One of them could fall down and then, you know, that's what we call unseating. So this is the unseating failure that we saw in the in four bridges that we saw in the previous slide. Okay, how can we use now the smart material that's called shape memory alloys to prevent this from happening? Well, we came up with this idea. Why don't we use little wires made of SMA just to connect the two frames? So, because remember, these materials tend to remember the shape, 
they will always keep the two frames close to each other. So instead of having, you know, you're in an earthquake with the frames shaking like this, with this SMAs installed, they will shake like this. You know, because it's always trying to grab back the two frames and bring them closer to each other. So this hinge open will never exceed the limit and, you know, it will protect it from uh, seeing and not seeing. This is one very cool application for SMA. It's not very expensive because we just put a bunch of wires. You know, we didn't build the whole bridge with SMA. It's just a bunch of wires in the hinge. Let me show you another example. This is another type of damage that we see all the time in bridges. Okay, the columns get really damaged, like an explosion happening at the top or the bottom of the column. Okay, the columns are very important elements because they carry the entire structure. If they fail, they could cause the failure of the entire building or bridge. Okay, so uh, to prevent this from happening, we came up with a very cool idea here at the University of Illinois using the gain shape from reality. Basically, what we did is that we used SMA spirals. And what we did here is that we stretch the wires, like what I did right now exactly with the spring. We wrap it around the column at the very critical location that we are interested in that could explode during an earthquake, okay? And once we wrap it, we'll do next, heat it, all right? So what will it do when we heat it? It will attempt to shrink. It will squeeze the column at that location. Okay, and this squeezing force will prevent it from exploding during an earthquake. So, let's see some examples for some of the tests. This is one cylinder, actually concrete cylinder, it's like this big, you know, that we wrapped with this and we were testing this idea if it's going to work or not. It worked great, so we moved to testing some columns. And this is how we tested the column really. This is an actual real column that we tested in our lab here. And this is called an actuator. This is like an arm like this that pulls and push the specimen. It's like mimics the effect of an earthquake. Back and forth, back and forth like this. Okay, and then we of course wrap the column in the base here with the SMA spirals and then we start seeing, you know, how it will behave. So, for example, let me show you one video here for the column without any wraps. There's nothing applied there and please look at the damage happening down here. Well, I wish it was working faster than this. But from here, you can see that you know, there's some crack developing. Can you see that, guys? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then a crushing happening here and here. It's like an explosion, very similar to what we have seen before. Yeah, can you see that? Just let it run a couple more times. So and then the whole thing just fails. Because this is without any wraps. This is what we would see if we don't, in a real bridge without any spirals. Now the next step was to wrap it with very strong plastic. Not smart material, not SMA, but a very strong plastic. And I'll show you what happened next. So this is a column that, as you can see, is different in color because it's wrapped with plastic. And again, we shape it the same way. And you see what happened down there. Again, there's an explosion. There's still damage. So the plastic even was broken and, you know, the concrete inside was what we call spot, all right? Okay, now, the third step, we wrapped it with SMA now, smart material. And I'll show you what happened here. So, here we have, like, SMA spars with two millimeter, very, very tiny wires. And you can see, you know, well, the thing is, this is not moving as it should, but hopefully you will see it towards the end. Uh, if we have any kind of damage. So even towards the end, you don't see any kind of damage. Well, it's not as exciting as it was for my computer. But the microprinter is more exciting than this. Unfortunately, you know, it doesn't show the full uh, displacement. But even towards the end of the testing, you know, you don't see any kind of damage or any slide or any question. Why? Because of this, again, squeezing effect of the smart materials. So this is just a couple applications of what we have here. Even after the test was complete, <coughs> we just looked at the what's left over in the column, really. So how much damage each one got. And you can see the two ones without the SMAs, there's like half of the column was completely gone, and this one with the SMA pretty much is still intact, the concrete is still there. So, you know, this is very powerful in preventing the actual happening. These are just a couple examples of the SMAs 
Now I'll, I'll you know, get out of your way so that you can enjoy playing with these little things and you know, learn more about them. And I guess the guys here have prepared a lot of toys for you that you will play with and stuff. But before I leave, uh, we have to take any questions.